Hi, I'm Dr. Dan Fortenbacher, founder of Wild Vision Therapy. Thank you for taking a moment to watch this video on amblyopia, advanced treatment for lazy eye. Amblyopia, otherwise known as lazy eye, affects about 1 in 30 individuals. That's about 3% of the population. And as a result of this visual dysfunction, the individual will have reduced eyesight in one eye compared to the other, even with best correction. That translates into a deficiency in depth perception, and deficiencies in visually directed motor skills, in eye-hand coordination, visual spatial judgments, and a variety of other areas. Many times this has been coined as a dominant eye and a lazy eye. And it's kind of like thinking of the dominant eye as the bully doesn't allow the lazy eye to play. We have two eyes, they have to work together, and that is what is known as binocular vision. In order to understand the cause of amblyopia, you first of all need to understand that it is due to a disruption in the normal development of an infant and toddler in their binocular vision, typically due to one of two things. One is strabismus, which is a form of binocular dysfunction involving a crossed eye or an eye that turns out. The second is due to a refractive amblyopia, where there's a significant difference in the focus between the two eyes. The dominant eye has a normal focus, and the lazy eye has a significant refractive error that could be a large degree of farsightedness, nearsightedness, or astigmatism. It interferes with the sight development that occurs in the affected eye, and it also results in the visual system knowing how to use the two eyes effectively. As a result of the binocular dysfunction, a neural adaptation occurs that is known as suppression. This is where the developing neural software in the infant and young toddler allows that child to experience single vision by shutting off the affected eye. As a result, they do not experience the confusion of double vision. And therefore, effective treatment for this needs to be targeted on remediating the dysfunction in binocular vision. One of the most common problems associated with occlusion therapy or patching is compliance. A child just resists wearing the eye patch because largely it creates such a disruption to their overall ability to navigate around their environment. Think of it. This child has poor eyesight, and now we're placing a cover on their good eye and asking them to get around in their environment. I would challenge you to try this yourself. Put a cover on one eye and try to walk around and see how that feels. The other side of it is wearing an eye patch draws attention to a child, and oftentimes in a negative way. Many times they can be bullied, and that can affect their self-esteem. As a result, a child will resist wearing an eye patch. One of the advancements in the standard model of amblyopia treatment has been the application of atropine. Atropine eye drops is a way of penalizing the good eye so that the amblyopic eye has the opportunity to see. And the way it works is the medicine temporarily paralyzes the focusing mechanism of the eye, thereby acting like a patch. So while atropine has its advantages of forced compliance, it also has its own disadvantages that result from heightened light sensitivity and disorientation. One of the common myths that centers around amblyopia is that age limits an individual from progressing effectively in treatment. And in many ways that is true when it comes to occlusion or patching therapy. However, research has shown that advanced therapy, including binocular office-based vision therapy, age is no longer a barrier to success. Vision therapy is an effective treatment modality based on a process that involves learning. The visual system is a learned system. We don't come into this world knowing how to use our visual system. We acquire this after we're born. And so as this relates to children and adults with amblyopia, is that they have not effectively learned how to use this part of their visual brain. Vision therapy is a matter of organizing a series of activities that allows them to learn these skills. The way it works is we work with our patients in the office, one-on-one, -on -one, organizing activities that are centered on a game, a visual game or challenge. 
And in that game, there's three things that are happening. One, there's an awareness cue. That's something to pay attention to, and it sets the stage for the next element of the game. That next element is feedback. Be able to see if you've done the challenge correct or not. Without that, you will not have effective learning. So awareness and feedback are essential elements in the vision therapy experience. And the third one is what we call loading. Loading is where we add something else into the drill. Something else that involves multitasking. It could be balance, movement, listening, or thinking. The loading element is the accelerator to the learning experience. Done at the right amount, it creates a greater challenge and the patient learns the skill faster and transfers that into everyday life faster. So when we consider the different treatment modalities for amblyopia, it's not to say that occlusion therapy is wrong. It's just that binocular vision therapy is more right. The overall treatment modality is more effective. Our patient's amblyopia is eventually cured and with that comes an improvement in their visual acuity, their depth perception, and their overall judgment of visual space. That translates in overall quality of life and self-confidence and happiness that comes with better vision. For the latest information, including the most recent research on the topic of amblyopia, I encourage you to go to the Vision Help blog. To find a doctor who specializes in binocular vision therapy for amblyopia, I encourage you to go to the COVD website and click on the doctor locator to find a doctor nearest you. Because life takes vision.